great weekend, boys and girls. I hope you are doing great and you've noticed we have a new theme going on. We got some heart, some love, some, who knows what the new theme could be. Which actually reminds me because last week I was going to tell you my two, tr my two truths and a lie, right? Some of you actually guessed it, but what I am gonna tell you is that the lie was my Thank you that you love us and that you are with us and that you are great and God we thank you for your love and your goodness and your kindness and your patience with us and we just ask you to be with us today as we learn more about you all right you guys so we have our new theme which is called real love so we're going to be talking about how God loves us and how we can love others and all stuff like that so it's gonna be super fun, which actually brings me to my, the big idea today. The idea today is, oh, person. 
Doctor saw me. Why are you crying? Because my friend Anne told me that God loves her. That's great because God does love her, and it's a great thing to teach. Well, hold on. Um, why are you crying? Because what about me? I want to be loved. All right, here. Taking your tissue. Well, you've come on a perfect day then. Because today we're learning that God loves me. You're you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Because God loves you, He loves me, He loves the kids at home. Our big idea today is God loves everyone. See? So you don't need to be upset. I'll give you an extra here. Let's just give you a box of tissue tissues there. Anyway, now you get to go and calm down, take some deep breaths, remember that God yeah. loves you, and tell all your friends that God loves them too. Okay. All right. Thank you, Pastor Kay. You're welcome. Have a good day, Dr. Salmate. Bye-bye. Well, now that Dr. Salmate is gone, let me put our big idea into one sentence for you. Our big idea today is God loves everyone. Do you hear that? God doesn't just love me. He doesn't just love Dr. Salmate. He doesn't just love you. He loves us all. He loves everyone, which it's really cool in our story today that you're going to get to see that. So we're going to do our story through a video today. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. During Jesus' ministry, he taught in public places, performed many miracles, and proclaimed God's truth with great power and conviction. Many people loved him. Others hated him. Some people recognized his power and the mighty wisdom through which he taught, but could not reconcile his message with their tradition. One such person was Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a leader of the Jews, People respected Nicodemus for his great knowledge of the law, his strict behavior, and his great wisdom. He heard of Jesus and was very interested in his teaching. But he had a lot of unanswered questions. The Pharisees were part of the religious leadership of the day. Many of them found their worth in the strict observance of the law. Most of them did not agree with Jesus, while some, like Nicodemus, could not dismiss Jesus' great power and wisdom. Daily, as Jesus taught in public places, the Pharisees came to listen. They asked Jesus a lot of questions, many trick questions, but could never find any fault with him. Nicodemus wanted to speak with Jesus, but because he was a Pharisee, he had to be careful not to be seen with Jesus in broad daylight. He had to find a special time to meet with him. Late one night, guided by the light of the stars and moon, Nicodemus found his way through the dark streets of the city to the place where Jesus was staying. He had a lot of questions about the law, about Jesus' teaching, and about Jesus himself. Jesus was prepared to explain to Nicodemus everything he needed to know. That night, Nicodemus would leave a changed man. Jesus explained to Nicodemus that he could not inherit God's kingdom if he was not born again. Born again? Nicodemus was confused. What did this mean? It's impossible for a grown man to become a baby and be born again, Nicodemus answered. But Jesus was not talking about becoming a baby. He was talking about a life change so dramatic, so radical, and so new that it would be like being born again. Unless one is born of water and the Spirit, Jesus explained, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Nicodemus began to understand, but he was still confused. How can this be? He asked Jesus, trying to wrap his mind around it. Jesus knew that Nicodemus was having a hard time believing him, if you're having a hard time believing earthly things, it will be very hard for you to believe heavenly things. But you must believe. I am the Messiah. 
I have come to give people eternal life. The truth began to dawn upon Nicodemus. Jesus was the Messiah. Jesus' mission was to give new life. Jesus spoke the truth to Nicodemus patiently and clearly. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus also told Nicodemus that he came not to condemn the world, but that the world would be saved through him. For Nicodemus, the prophecies in Scripture had come true. The Messiah was standing in front of him. What a wonderful revelation! That day, Nicodemus learned about God's love, about eternal life. He believed and found his place in the kingdom of God. Pretty cool story, hey? And I don't know what it was, but when I was reading that story today before I did the video and before I picked a, picked a video for you, I just was kind of overwhelmed with the fact that how much we can be like Nicodemus. How we think we know everything and how we think we know what's right and we think we know what's wrong because like the video said, Nicodemus was a Pharisee. It was his job to enforce and teach and make sure people followed the law. And then Jesus comes and kind of rocks his whole world and changes everything. And Nicodemus comes as this guy who realizes he's not, he doesn't have all the answers. He doesn't actually know. He doesn't actually know what, what God's plan is and what Jesus is doing there, but he knows, he knows he doesn't know. He knows he has no idea. And so he comes humbly. He comes willing to learn, knowing he doesn't have the answers. This Pharisee who's supposed to have all the answers comes humbly to Jesus, who isn't a Pharisee. He isn't even a religious leader at this time. He's just Jesus. He's just someone who's going around teaching. But this Pharisee comes and he asks Jesus, what do I do? I don't know what I'm doing. I don't understand. I just know you're right, but I need more information. Can you please tell me more? And Jesus, he doesn't judge him. He doesn't laugh at him. He doesn't say, wow, so much for a Pharisee knowing all the answers, huh? He doesn't do that. Jesus is almost pleased. He probably, Jesus is pleased that Nicodemus is coming to him. That Nicodemus is putting down his pride and his title as a Pharisee to learn and to come and learn at the feet of Jesus. Because we hear in this story about being born again and what that means. Because, you know, being born again sounds kind of weird. It's like you can't just go back into your mom's tummy and come back out. It's not a thing. But Jesus explains that it's changing your life. And in that moment, Nicodemus accepts God and accepts Jesus and is reborn. And the, most importantly, Nicodemus not only comes to Christ, but he also learns about God's love and how God's love was to save the world. And God's love is so big and so great and so mighty that he sent his son to die for us because of how much he loved us. And Nicodemus got to experience that love. And we do, we get to experience that kind of love because God never stops loving us. He never stops caring about us. He gave his son for us. You guys, that's a huge deal. God loved us so much. He loves the world so much. He gave his one and only son. Whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. Like that's huge. And we're going to be learning more and more about that this month.
We talked about how God loves everyone. And I'm not just saying everyone in the church or anyone in your house or just anyone. He loves everyone. Absolutely everyone. And it's just amazing. Since God loves us so much, isn't it kind of, doesn't that kind of show that love is important to God? We are supposed to love others. We're supposed to show that love that God gives because God's love is great. God's love is mighty and God's love has no bounds. And we're supposed to love the same. So before we go into prayer, and before we're done for the day, I want you to, to think of a time or maybe even two, three, four, five, six, whatever it is, where maybe you didn't show love the way you should, or maybe a moment that it was hard to love someone. But just take a moment and tell God about that moment and ask him to help you love everyone. Because you guys, I, I get it, it's hard. There's been times for me where it's like, well, that person hurt me. I don't wanna love them. That person's mean, I don't wanna love them. And here's a big one. That person's different from me. It's harder to love them. But with God, we need to show that love to everyone, just like he loves us and he loves everyone. We should be doing it in return. So just take a moment, ask for forgiveness for the times you didn't show love, and then ask God to just help you love more, all right? All right, you guys, let's pray together today. Hands up, hands out, hands in. God, we just thank you so much that you love us, that you love Dr. Salmate, you love Anne, Dr. Salmate's friend, you love me, you love the people watching this video, and God, you just love everyone. And God, I just thank you for the story of Nicodemus and how God, you just came and used your son to show Nicodemus how mighty your love is. And God, just like you showed Nicodemus how your love is, help us learn and know and understand your love more and help us love those around us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys, so thank you so much for joining today. I hope you enjoyed seeing Dr. Saul, mate. You gotta meet him today. But as always, I hope you have a fantastic week. Oh, I just remembered something. I kind of cut off in the middle of the, in the beginning of the video there, but the, the two truths and one lie, the lie was my birthday. My birthday is not July 19th, 1994. My birthday is July 18th, 1996. I do have three pets. I have Rodney, Cheddar, and Fox, and I do have five tattoos. So fun times, hey? Anyway, there you guys go. You got it, and the draws will be happening in the next video for next week, okay? There's some people who ask for just a little more time to submit their, their stuff, so we will do it next week, and then they will be delivered to you before you know it. Sound good? Awesome. All right, you guys, I hope you had fun today, and as always, I love you, I miss you, and I hope to see you soon. Bye.